Hello everyone, welcome back to Indie Book Review, where today I am actually reviewing a short story collection called Wild Thoughts, well, sorry, Wild Thoughts Fiction, Marvelous Myths by C.A. Broadrib. And, yeah. So because it's a short story collection, I'm not going to go through my usual point system of plot, character, uh, research and imagination, writing and ending, because, well, I'd have to do it for every single story, and, well, that's just taxing as fuck. So, I'm going to go through the majority of the stories, you know, or, I, well, I'm going to go through all, all the stories, and I'm going to just kind of give you a, a bit of a rundown on my thoughts on it, what it's about, so on and so forth, and, yeah, go from there. So, the first story, The Writer's Festival. Um, it's... A fine story. I mean, it's written in second person, which honestly I really do believe is a tense that is not used nearly enough. Seriously, second tense, really neat to read. Because it really draws you in because it's you. You are the you are the character. And that's actually really neat. There, there, there's two stories in this book that are in second or in second person, and I like that. But yeah, Writer's Festival, but it's about a person who's at this Writer's Festival, and he's found out that, uh, actually at this Writer's Festival, that he died, and he's watching time just kind of fly fly by with this festival. It's not a long story, in fact, most of the stories in this book are pretty short, but it's, it's a good story, I liked it. Three Heroes, the next story, um, it... Once again, it wasn't a bad story. It's about these three guys who are clearly not cut out to be adventurers, trying to be adventurers. And they go and, you know, like total noobs, go and take on a dragon and get promptly get their asses kicked. I mean, they managed to escape, which, you know, good, good one for them for that one. I mean, uh, first level partiers going against a dragon, not usually the best of plans. C.A. Broadrib is a fan of Dungeons and Dragons, as is very prevalent in this short story collection, and I actually hope to see more of more like that in the in the next one that I read. Uh, shoot Max, he is also apparently a fan of Max Payne too. <laughs> um, this actually takes place through the point of view of one of the NPCs, as he gets as he gains some sort of. Uh, sentience within the game itself and starts calling himself uh, by a different name. I think he calls himself Oliver and starts giving the other characters names as well. And he knows that he has to shoot this guy named Max. And it's actually really neat to see something from the point of view of a video game NPC. I, I approve. The next story, Mistaken Identity, is... Actually, what I didn't quite fully understand or didn't fully grip until right until right near the end, and at the same time with the explanation that he gave at the end of the book, that one I didn't care for as much. But mostly because I just didn't get it. But maybe that's just me, you know. Um, be careful what you wish for. It's a pretty standard title for this sort of thing. Woman finds a genie in a lava lamp, which is. Not the sort of place I'd ever expect to find a genie, so kudos for imagination right there. Um, yeah, and it's typical genie shenanigans. You know, it's it's a genie story. I like genie stories. They, 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 I honestly don't think they need to change. There's a lot of things in writing that I do think needs to change. I don't think genie stories ever do. I, I, I think they're fine the way they are. Alright, the next one. The Whale. This is another one I didn't fully get without uh, reading the end uh, blurb th uh, that he did. So, I th this one doesn't stick out to me near as much. This woman goes out uh, to the sea. She sees a whale. Uh, she goes to this little observation deck, sees some graffiti that says her name, and then it says a few other things, and then, I don't know, I think it was transmission ended, or transmission denied, or, or something like that, and you know, a bunch of stuff disappears on her, and it it, it was kind of weird. I think it was I think it might have been late when I read it, or really stupid early when I read it, so my brain wasn't fully working. I think if I read it again, I probably would get it, but for the time being, 
it was fine for what it was. Didn't fully get it. Uh, the dinner party. This one was actually really cool. This one I actually really enjoyed. Um, the dinner party, basically this guy goes in to rob this place, uh, just try and find whatever antiques he, he possibly can that might actually be worth anything. And he's bombarded by these ghosts who don't really see him at, at, like, in his modern attire or at, as a thief as he is. But they're not leaving him alone because they're here for this dinner party. And it's actually really entertaining. And I really enjoyed that one. Uh, Zam. X-A-M. Um, this is another one for the Max Payne 2. This one I greatly enjoyed. Basically, this character, he's another one of the Max Payne NPCs that, you know, you're supposed to shoot, boom, 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 bang, 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 but he finds a way out of his game and manages to find his way into uh, Grand Theft Auto, I think it was Vice City or something like that. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, yes, GTA Vice City. And then he makes his way into Sim City, which, hilarious. <laughs> And then eventually into a online poker game. An online strip poker game. Again, hilarious. And he he chooses to stay there over the Max Payne or Sam City or Grand Theft Auto, which, you know, fair choice. Good choice there. I definitely concur. I would have st stayed there too. I don't think anybody wants to see this naked, but I mean, who knows? I, I sure don't. <laughs> uh, the Battle of the Deities. I did not know what to expect with this story. It is chaos incarnate. It is all over the goddamn place. There are characters aware of the story. There are characters aware that they're not real. There's characters who don't really know or understand this. There's this one character who's consistently trying to get to this meeting. And it, it it's full, true, utter chaos. And it works so beautifully well. I loved it so much. I I think I read that story twice because I just really enjoyed it. Seriously. Battle of the Deities has absolutely nothing to do with the title and even he says the story just kind of took off and I did I didn't want to change the title or something to that effect. Uh Yeah, he started in high school um uh, with this idea of, of gods fighting for area and space, but then it just kind of took off and went into this nonsense plot and it's hilarious and I love it. The Ghost Bus. This is another of the second person perspective. And like I said, this is not something that's used near enough. I love second person. It is so uh, immersive. And, you know, it's about a person who gets on this bus and weird shit's happening and people are disappearing and all this other stuff's going on and yeah. But you can't make a ruckus otherwise everybody, everybody tries to shush you and yeah, I actually really enjoyed this one. Uh, the Search for Barrett. Uh, this one is very definitely a D&D &D oriented story. Uh, about a rogue and a cleric off to find this kid who ran off or was kidnapped or whatever and I actually I, I think he ran off into this old magician's house and they've got to try and find him and it's very Dungeons and Dragons and it is so clear that this guy really enjoyed the story that he was writing. Like, there's the original version of the story at the very end which I'm not going to get into. Um, you can tell that this guy had enough love for this story that he actually went back and fixed the story instead of just leaving it as is or scrapping it all together. Like, he had a passion for it, and I appreciate seeing that. I loved seeing that. So, The Search for Barrett, it wasn't my favorite of the, of the stories, but the sake that he did go back and actually add so much more to it and just fix the writing to it, because, you know, he, he wrote the original back in high school. I understand. I mean, anyone who's read my U... Who's watched my Uaria videos... Yeah, the high, high school writing's not always the greatest. It's usually pretty bad. So, I get it. But, yeah, he came back, 
he came back to it, and it's definitely implanted into my mind now as something that I just greatly appreciated seeing. Uh, Dragon. Just a really short poem. It was nice. Don't really have any real thoughts on it. Uh, the Big Bad Wolf. Loved it. Really do. Really, really loved it. It's kind of a spin on, on Red Riding Hood, and it's got one hell of a moral at the end. I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. you got to read this one. Uh, where's my magic wand? Gwen's naughty magic wand and a birthday surprise are about this fairy trying to give this kid gifts. That's pretty much the extent of them. Uh, where's my magic wand? She's trying to find her wand. Gwen's naughty magic wand. The wand's not doing what she wants it to because it's dirty. She had to clean it. And a birthday surprise. She gave the kid a birthday surprise. It was great. They're fun little stories. Definitely good for kids. Um, yeah, I, I had no problem with them. Uh, bonus story I wrote when I was nine, The Water Monster. Yeah. It's clear that it was written by a nine-year-old. It's imaginative. Like, it's definitely not a bad story. I definitely didn't hate reading it. Hell, I didn't even, even not enjoy it. I actually kind of enjoyed reading it. But it's clear that it was written by a nine-year-old. It's it's a fun little story. It's kind of, it kind of goes off on on its own little tangent, but it, it's fun. I liked it. But all in all, I actually give this short story collection a, a seven point five out of ten. It it does its job really really well. I really enjoyed reading it. It was really honestly just really fun. Is probably the best way I can I can put this. I look forward to reading the next one that he gave me, and I'm. I can't wait to get into it. It's going to be a little bit because I've got a list. Oh, I've got a list. But I can't wait to get into it. So until the next time, see you guys later. Bye.